systems that just filter out all AI crap. So if it's if it says certain words, we know it's AI. If it's certain phrases, we know it's AI. And we don't even look at them. They go directly into the trash. All right. Happy Monday. Uh, welcome to Lunch with Norm. This is Norm Farrar, a.k.a. The Beard Guy here. And welcome to the podcast, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing leveraging AI to optimize and scale your Amazon business. We're going to be talking about how AI is reshaping the online retail lands landscape. How can AI uh, be used in social media and how can Amazon sellers use it, uh, leverage it? So welcome to another Lunch with Norm. Uh, let's try that again. It's Monday. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right. Today we're discussing leveraging AI to optimize and scale your Amazon business. Our guest is the founder and CEO of Digital Blacksmiths, Edison Coin. Our, um, Arma Getaways and Flix Media. He is a digital. Yeah, he is a digital blacksmith that uh, specializes in driving external traffic. Uh, expert in uh, developing, engaging, and monetizing digital communities. He travels the world and teaches people how to manage and optimize ROI-focused communities with loyal buyers. Now, this is. A buddy of mine, we've been around forever. We've co-founded businesses together. Um, and again, he's the CEO of Digital Blacksmiths and one of my favorite guys, uh, Wilfred Lightheart. So we'll be getting to him shortly, but let's have a word from our sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, Get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today, and now let's get back to the show. Big drum roll. I think this is the third or fourth time he's been on. So sit back, relax, grab your cup of coffee, or in his case, smart water or whatever he drinks. And welcome, Wilfried. Hey, how are you doing, Norm? I'm doing great. How are you? Just Dutch water eh, for me. No cigars, no Coke Zero light. <laughs> Coke Zero and coffee. Got to have them both. Yeah. Double, yeah, double fisting caffeine. It's, it's been a while eh? and the uh, world is changing. So normally I talk about social media and how to do that. But uh, we have a new tool that's AI. So, uh, yeah, in four years from now, uh, we're just sitting somewhere else and let our AI avatar do the talking. Yeah. Eh? That's probably going to be it. Yep. I, I And I don't think it'll be four years. It'll probably be in a couple of years or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. But that's why I'm uh, yeah very excited about AI and also uh, what not to do with it, because I see also a lot of people not misusing it, but use it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, one of the worst things I'm seeing right now is... Uh, the generalization, thinking that uh, it, it does everything for you. So if you, you know, just going to tune into one one of like, you, you know, either ChatGPT or any of them, Bard, whoever, and you're putting in just general information, like a single prompt, like just general information and you're sending out emails. And right now, I don't know about you, but I have, and this usually comes in from LinkedIn, but uh, emails that come in, I have Mary who kind of goes through my inbox every morning and we have filters that just filter out all AI crap. So if it's, if it says certain words, we know it's AI. If it's certain phrases, we know it's AI and we don't even look at them. They go directly into the trash. Yeah. So it's AI plus what you need to do. Eh? And that's why I'm here as well, just to tell you what not to do and how to use it the best I way. Know, yeah. I know that's what you're here for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I use it myself uh, for a little over six months now or so, I guess. And yep. Yeah, we see amazing results. Uh, everybody knows with AI, you can create text, images, videos, 3D graphics, uh, that kind of stuff. 
we're also testing or testing, uh, looking at Google, what they are doing with uh, regenerative AI. Yeah. That's something that will be implemented anywhere between now and, and one year from now. And that means that if you search for, let's say, what is a mortgage, then uh, the AI will push all the content down. So let's say you worked five years to get on the number one spot on Google. All of a sudden, you're in between the dead bodies, as we always say, yeah, <laughs> the best place to hide a dead body is page two on Google or Amazon. Nobody ever goes there. Right. But that's why you need to be aware of as well. And uh, We found out that Google will go after 100 million keywords that way. So what is a mortgage, for example? Don't go for that keyword. Luckily, there are 4.9 billion keywords left to go after. For example, how to lower my mortgage. That's not something a Google will touch because if they say this is how you lower your mortgage by setting your house on fire, for example, because AI is sometimes stupid, then they will be sued. So that's that's one thing uh, I will look after. Also, the, the new big trends. Okay, but, I don't understand that. So can sorry? you go back and explain that? So if I'm an how would that affect a, an Amazon seller? So you were talking about these keywords that you shouldn't use. Uh, I got a little bit lost. Can you just go back well, and explain for example, it? let's say uh, uh, you're also in the soap business. So let's say uh, how to create soap yep. or handmade soap. That's probably something the AI will, will generate because, oh, what is soap? That's a better example. Right, okay. So you will see that uh, it's almost like you go to chat DPT and ask uh, what is soap and then you get an answer right there. So you don't see the, the websites anymore or your Amazon listings. Uh, it will just generate an AI text, just plain text without any links. But if you ask the question, uh, uh, what is the best handmade soap? And that's your product, of course. Of course. Then that's a, <laughs> that's a question that will not be answered by AI because they don't know it yet. So they still see the old rankings. Huh? And that's why you should be aware as well. But maybe that's a, a step too far. Huh? Let's go back to the beginning. I'm here to, to talk about sellers that probably never heard of AI or, or just do the baby steps in it. And for that uh, uh, purpose, yeah, there are so many things out there that's, that's actually amazing. Uh, what I did now for a client is go to Helium 10, put in the ASIN, and it generated a, a very long uh, a CSV file. I put it into uh, a chat DPT. And for that purpose, you need to have the paid version. Yeah. You need to uh, then go to click on your name. Uh, normally, I share my screen, so I now have to be a little bit more visual talking about it. You go to the beta features, and then you click on Code Interpreter. What you then can do is basically throw in Excel files, PDFs, whatever. Right. And then you can just ask the code interpreter, uh, this is my ASIN. This is the report that's generated. Now find me some, some nice things. For example, the correlation between review count, review ratings, and monthly sales revenue. For example, the analysis between trends over the last 90 days. What has changed in the market? sales to review ratio to determine how many sales typically result in a review. Uh, and, and go on and on and on. And normally you can look at it yourself, but now it's done in seconds. And maybe you overlook something because those reports are uh, 60 pages long. And in this case, you can just do it almost every week on autopilot. And it gives you amazing results because instantly you see if you have five reviews more, your sales go up by this or something like that. And yeah, that's using the code interpreter. You know, what else just, you just one sec, Wilfred. Yeah, and I'll, probably, I'll, I'll probably be interrupting you a lot more than usual. <laughs> but uh, okay, so for those of you who are not uh, familiar with code interpreter, what you would do is you would go into ChatGPT and under your uh, settings, you have to click that and you have to turn it on. It rolled out in beta. It should be available to everybody who has paid. And you just, you have to turn it on. And yep. what code interpreter will do is just analyze your data. Now, believe it or not, I, I was playing around uh, just the other day with it. And I was, um, I was able to upload images because there is a plus sign there. You can upload images and get it to play around. Like I, I know Midjourney is a thousand times better and there's other platforms out there that uh, create images, but you can manipulate images. This is one 
crazy thing that you can do with a code interpreter. You can upload an image and you know how sometimes images compress or they go too wide. You could get it to format into a square image or you can have it, uh, you know, a very specific size. So you want it to create the image for Facebook, YouTube, or not YouTube, uh, but all the other different social platforms. And it'll take that image and it'll just like that automatically convert and it converts files, which you can throw all your Word documents up there and it convert them over to PDFs instantly. It's it's super powerful, and not a lot of people know about Code Interpreter, but it's a it's a really great uh, uh, little add-on. Absolutely, and what you also can do is zoom in. You can, for example, you have a still image, and then you can just make it animated. So if you say, uh, make an MP4 out of it, and then you can you just zoom in on your product. So those things are actually amazing. But uh, yeah. if we go back to the to the old one, you have everyone should have a paid option. Eh? That it's twenty dollars a month. That's that's nothing. Because if you want to create articles, I use it a lot for SEO and also for my social. Uh, you can have great ideas. And you need to, to teach it a little bit. Eh? You just cannot say, write me a 50 or 500 word article. What I always do is act as an SEO expert. So you need to train it a little. Mm -hmm. uh, show me the topics you can have uh, when, let's say, I'm, uh, I sell aquariums in the aquarium niche. And then ask, uh, give me the LSI keywords. Eh? Those are uh, the, the ones that Google cares more about. Uh, I would cover if you would uh, write an article like this. So it gives me 50 words. Then you go back and say, write a lengthy article using all those keywords. And at the end, it's like a child. You have to say, did you use all the keywords? And then probably they say, oh, sorry, I missed a few. And they will rewrite it again. So it's... As you said, also in the beginning, it's not just one prompt and you're done. No, you need to train it a little and uh, season it. It's just like you make a good Kobe beef uh, with a little salt and a little pepper. And at the end, you will have great results. Uh, I use it also for topic clouds. Let's say mm -hmm. I'm in the uh, uh, skating niche. I say, well, give me a topic cloud with articles I need to cover for my website about skateboards. And then it gives you 25 different options. And then again, go in and say, what are the high volume, low competition keywords in this particular niche? And now you're, again, train the algorithm a little bit about what you're uh, going after. And then at the end, ask to write it an article uh, with 2,000 words with the frequently asked questions section. And uh, don't do not use that article to put on your website. What I always do is use Grammarly to make mm -hmm. it more human friendly. Otherwise people will see it's AI and Google doesn't care about it's AI. Yeah? They still rank you for it. They will not penalize you. Right. Because uh, if you uh, basically talk about all the different points, then uh, uh, yeah, they, they will still rank you for it. And we did a test with one website and uh, it's it's about Mexico, and, and now all of a sudden we have twenty thousand uh, in traffic already. And uh, the uh, the the website is totally written in AI. There is, and, and the funny thing is, you know, my Spanish is a norm. I speak one word Spanish, C. Yeah. But we also translated the whole website into Spanish using AI. We just asked translate this from English to Spanish, and probably we did a fine job there as well because we're also ranking for the Spanish version of it so as an amazon seller as well i always say you need to have a blog website that better is to have your own shopify but let's say you have your own website with your articles selling uh, sending people to your amazon listings because amazon still loves external traffic then you create language variations and now all of a sudden mm -hmm. you can make it as i said in spanish or i have a website and i saw that one of the best pages was in korean now I have a Korean page who could figure I cannot read it and totally don't understand what it's saying, but people click on it, it's probably good. So that's that's another way to use it. So basically, the sky is the limit. Be creative and uh, use it yeah, to the best way you can. Uh, you make your titles better. Ask, for example, this is my title on Amazon. Uh, what is your suggestion to give five different ones? 
what we also did last week, for example, and I'm all over the place eh, because this is my new passion. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I totally understand that the people will can just pause it, go back. But we created the press release, and uh, basically, if in, in 10 minutes, the press release was written. And uh, now you can send it out. And there are so many uh, uh, press release items out there. We were at uh, AB, abnewswire.com. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure. Do you still have your wire? Your press yeah, you, you haven't been using it. That's for sure. But uh, now you can, can use things like that for a, a very low price. And you can just send out press releases with links to your, your blog post. And that's so amazing. Because you know, if you, if you have wanted an article with three thousand words, you, normally it takes two weeks and one hundred dollars, and finally you get it back, and it's not good enough. And now we we have it in seconds and uh, tweak it and adjust it like yeah. uh, like you want it. And, and even with even with that, so if you're writing a blog article or if you're writing a, a PR, you you train the prompt, right? You have a multi prompt, just explaining that you want it here's a here's a tip so you you write your blog article and you can use ai to generate it but then you want to write a, a news uh, a press release and what you can do is um you can get it to uh, review the blog article and you can do this with bard easily um and i know that you can do this with chat gpt it just it's a one step extra but with chat with um with bar with sorry with bing you could just get them to reference the uh, information. And you can do that right now uh, with the new um, web reference in ChatGPT where you could just put in the URL and then ask the question, but reference that and create a blog article the, or the a, news, a, a newsworthy press release. You can give it the, the keywords from the, uh, uh, from the blog article and you could talk about, use the, um, the press release guidelines and that way it sees it it interprets it uh and it understands the press release guidelines and once you do that then it'll give you a quote if you ask it for a quote or give two quotes it'll use first person rather than and that's the biggest problem we always saw is that people wrote it in first person or uh they write it all in like third person and they miss out on the opportunity with the quote. But there's a lot of rules that people don't understand when you're writing a blog article or a press release. AI takes, uh, it's a breeze to do. And then you just have to find a, a, a good distribution network. So um, anyways, that's cool. But let's go back to, um, uh, I mean, if we can elaborate a bit on how AI is uh, reshaping online, um, the online retail lab, uh, landscape especially for amazon sellers yeah well absolutely well you can understand your customer better mm -hmm. for example if you want to create an avatar that's also what you told on stage all the time and eh? the, the brady bunch you want to create your personal avatar what i'm now doing for clients is say give me 10 avatars based upon my niche it's done in seconds. Normally, it takes me a whole day to create my avatar. Yes, they love Disney. They do this. They go to those different websites. And now it's done in seconds. And I can say, give me 10 different ones. And those I use in my personal ads. That's uh, uh, yeah, Those things could not happen uh, uh, a year uh, back. And for example, we also use tools like AdBots. That's a new one. And I love still love my AppSumo one. Eh? Uh, you're yeah, also a big I fan do. of it. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I bought AdBots there. What it's doing, it's basically AI for your Google uh, ads. And I know, I know they are working with other sources as well. So hopefully they will do Amazon PPC because it's literally AI going in and saying, uh, you missed out on this keyword or I will not use this keyword because it's not generating enough clicks or uh, all your paid clicks went to the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. uh, we use it for clients as well. And it also gives you a breakdown of what uh, ad spend you basically saved using this AI tool. And sometimes it's it's hundreds of dollars. We not a client, we, we saved $600 uh, dollars in one week because uh, it, it was for us so easy to do the uh, negative keywords, uh, keywords we didn't want to go after what's too expensive. So that's also another 
uh, avenue you can use your AI, AI tools with. So again, the sky is the limit. Eh? And the same with uh, email marketing. First, you need to create a lead magnet. Well, back in the day, uh, you need to have a writer or whatever. Now you can create a lead magnet with AI, create an awesome uh, book. Of course, put your own sauce in it eh? because you're the industry uh, expert and the industry leader. But now you have a lead magnet, put it on your website, you get the emails. I know a lot of people collecting emails, eh? 10% uh, discount if you give your email to a newsletter and then they don't do anything with it because writing an email, that's also a, a, a timely cost task. But now again, you can just ask ChatGPT or Bart, give me a, a five setup email about this product and mm -hmm. uh, value, value, value pitch. It's, it's, it's exactly. incredible yeah. what, what you can do, but uh, I guess, again, it's priming the prompt. And that's where I think a lot of people have to understand, you know, about a priming prompts and they're getting better. Uh, I just saw uh, just a question. And if you do have questions about uh, plugins or uh, anything about AI, let us know. Uh, we both are pretty experienced in it and we could probably answer quite a few questions here about uh, online or just how to use it in general but um, uh, one of the things that I'm kind of curious uh, Wilfred I I just um, found an incredible plugin and one that'll trans create transcripts uh, what was it I just started using Zapier by the way on chat GPT uh, let me just see this. I found it. I, I started using it. And what it's doing is you can go and use your competitors or you can go to any YouTube channel and it'll analyze it. It'll summarize it. Let me just see. I just installed it the other day and it's going to give me a problem. Of course, you're going to give me a problem. <laughs> yeah, there's All right. so much out there. What you also say is text to speech. Uh, or video to text, and then you can just ask ChatGPT to make a breakdown of it or the, the bullet points, and then you can use that as a blog post on your own website. Eh? That's that's one thing. Video oh. insights, that's what it's called. Okay, yeah. So video insights will take that, you you go to any, uh, any video and you want to create either a blog article out of it or if you want to just interpret it or if you want to take the information and say that you want to uh, rank better than that uh, video, it'll show you exactly how to do it. It's crazy. <laughs> and then yeah. the other one for me um, is uh, Zapier. So Zapier, um, I've never got the ability to do the best with Zapier. Like I've always, oh, it broke. Oh, it broke. Uh, now with this, I just put in what I want and it does it for me. You just link it to your account, it's done, and it's perfect. So that I think that's probably the best plugin that I've seen out there right now for ChatGPT. Yeah, absolutely. And then the same with Excel. If you have a problem, oh. what I normally did was scraping websites and smack yeah. it into a Word document, and then it needed to, to be put in columns. Yesterday, I just asked ChatGPT, this is, this is my dump file now make it neat into five different columns and again in 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 a minute said it was done and that's also code interpreter but other ways i use uh, ai as well as d uh, hyphen id.com what you can do there is just have a still image and then it will it will start talking so let's say i have a picture of you and then i just smack it in and then i can make you talk so uh you can also use that for your products or for your social <laughs> yeah i can just i can just tweak your uh i need to smoke four cigars first and then i have your same voice eh? and uh, yeah there you go <laughs> then i can can use yours as well what i found uh, the best uh ia tool for um uh, for voice was 11 labs you can yeah. actually put in uh if it's sad or whatever Come and, say and you cannot hear it's it's AI, so it's incredible. Hi, Connie. How are you doing? You can see my hand wave. Yeah, uh, she can't hear, but uh, I'll let you know. She's doing great. She's absolutely awesome because she says she's married to me. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the no, best. Connie, stop. I'm going to turn red. <laughs> <laughs> 43 inches. Norm, I asked ChatGPT, how long is your beard? 40, yep. I, I bet you it's close. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's, it's, of course, it's a joke, but that's where we going. Eh? It's yeah. it's incredible. It's, it's you, you cannot, uh, and of course, we're here for the Amazon sellers, but you can also ask what is the best movie people will love to go to next week or whatever. And, uh, or I like this movie. What other 10 movies are there out there? You can use it, of course, also on Amazon. This is the number one ranking factor. What other products do they sell? Or what is the best rank and that kind of stuff? And of course, it needs to have some kind of input. So that's what I give the example of Helium 10. Have you ever seen a CSV file? throw it in and it will find a great all idea of, uh, yeah 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 absolutely so okay. uh all right so we are at the bottom of the hour and anybody who's a first time listener um we have a giveaway at the top of the hour uh so if you're interested in it it's hashtag wheel of kelsey tag two people you'll get a second entry wilfred tell us what people are going to be getting today well, what I normally do is dissect uh, what you're doing. What is your digital footprint? And uh, that's what they will get. They will have the, uh, my wrath over them. No, it's, of course, it's an insight of what they're doing now, what there is a competition doing, and how can they improve themselves with the quick wings? Uh, what are keywords they can go after and that kind of stuff? Uh, what, what is basically the low-hanging fruit? What is the fastest way to be seen online? That's basically it. And I always say uh, I love Amazon, uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, I never forget ASTGG. I think you were there as well I, when I was a speaker there. And uh, I'm not sure if Amazon is listening, but they know it already. But my <laughs> question was, like to tease a little, who of you trust Amazon? And nobody raised their hand. And another question was, who is in control of their business? And again, nobody raised their hand because you're at the mercy of Amazon. And right. That's why I always say diversify as much as possible. Be on Walmart, be, be have your own store. And that's why I'm heavily promoting your own digital footprint. And uh, in that 30-minute call, I will dissect what you're doing now and what are the quick wins to um, to get scaling for now, any... as well as possible because I'm from Holland. Eh? We uh, are famous for not spending money at eh? the Dutch. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and you have to understand, uh, Wilfried, is also a finance guy, which is really crazy because what finance guy ever gets involved with this sort of stuff or with creativity? Um, so he's one of a kind. <laughs> but yes. anyway, the other yeah. thing too is that anybody who's had a chance to work with Wilfried from the podcast, he's been on a few times, will um, will tell you that this is a, uh, it's really a priceless 30 minute conversation because he is just full of knowledge. So anyways, hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people and you will get a second entry. Uh, let's see. How about we go to a sponsor and we'll come right back. This episode yeah. of lunch with Norm is sponsored by Shergo marketing ready to take your brand to the next level on TikTok and Instagram. Shergo marketing specializes in helping entrepreneurs and coaches build profitable brands on TikTok and Instagram and in less than 90 days. With Shergo marketing, you can build your brand, create incredible video content and increase leads without spending a single dime on ad spend. Visit ShergoMarketing.com today and elevate your brand. Now let's get back to the show. All right. Let's talk about one of your specialties, and that's social media. What can you do? What can an Amazon seller do? A lot don't have social media, but you should. Uh, it's about brand consistency. Uh, we should try to grow out so when people search us that they can see social media, but you can also get sales. What can we do, Wilfred, to really uh, build and scale our social media using AI? I think I'm the most excited about this particular point because, as I said, I've been on the show a few times and people start working on the social media, but there are only 24 hours in the day and that's it. Mm -hmm. And now you literally can ask ChatGPT, give me 25 quotes in my niche. For example, we have a, a client that's selling aquariums, as I said that example in the beginning. Now we said, give me 25 quotes and, the, uh, and also a few jokes because you need to mix it up a little. And it came with uh, the example, 
of a sad uh, a clownfish and saying, if people tell you to tell a joke, then we go to Mid Journey and said, create a sad clownfish. And we use that quote. We were done literally in two minutes and we reached 50,000 people because it was really funny. You saw a sad clownfish and above it says, when people ask you to tell a joke, and it definitely uh, resonated with the audience of people buying aquariums and having fish. And yeah, that's that's crazy how that went. And you can also do a lot of uh, mathematics, you, you know, with two blue fish and then a yellow one is 10. And then you have all the other things. People love those riddles and those right. things. But again, to create those yourself a year ago, it will take you all day. And now you're literally done in minutes. You can, again, go to Mid Journey. Another tool, it's still on AppSumo. I saw it's Airbrush. You can have it for $29 lifetime. And we'll also use Mid Journey. Yeah, you can just ask, create an image like this, combined with what you get on ChatGPT for the 25 different quotes and that kind of stuff. And, and basically, you're done. So you do not need a designer anymore. You don't need a writer anymore. And I always say, make yourself mad a little bit on Sunday morning between eight and 10, and you have content for the rest of the week. Now you need to make yourself mad between eight and 8.05 a.m. on Sunday morning. <laughs> it's, it's a joke, of course. You will still be posting that stuff, but it's you're done so much easier. And as you said, uh, what I also ask is um, uh, descriptions. I have a nice image but now i need a description and normally mm -hmm. you say oh this is nice don't you think so no we, you, now you ask jet gpt give me a facebook description give me an instagram description and give me a TikTok description you can also ask the as i said this this image needs to be converted into a video and then you can use it on TikTok and all kinds of different formats but uh, the algorithm knows best what uh, for example on instagram you can use nine hashtags they will give you nine hashtags or you can ask give me nine hashtags three low hanging fruit three in the middle and three high uh, 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 searches for the hashtags normally again it took you hours to go in and go to top hashtags and find them and put them in and now you can just ask uh, uh, whatever you want and if you're not happy you say oh, can you do it again because uh, I, I need something else or i need this or i need that and yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. You can uh, what I also use a lot is is trends. Uh, let's say I mean uh, the skating gear, the set skateboards. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, upcoming trend in the skateboard niche, and what uh, what is my comp competitor doing? And again, a chat DPT is only going to twenty twenty one. So if it's up to date, I go to Bart, Google Bart. It's now also uh, uh, rolled out in Europe as well. Yeah, combine those things. I've I've found that like you can go and Claude, Claude for me is the LLM LLM that I'm using. Claude can <laughs> you can enter a ton of information into Claude and it'll understand it, I think better than ChatGPT. And uh, anyways, check out like ChatGPT is great. But there's so many LLMs out there that you should be checking out and summarizing. So uh, we had Steve Wiedemann on last week, Kels, and he was talking about, I, I think it was Genie. I tried to find it. It didn't seem, it seemed to be only ChatGPT. But then I found Summarize and what it goes out and it, it, it goes out and it um, summarizes all the different ChatGPTs based on the same, or uh, LLMs based on the same question. And it comes up with different versions of what they would say. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's uh, normally you go to a website, uh, answer the public. Now you can just ask ChatGPT. Was the, the, the frequently asked questions in my niche, and then you answer yeah. them. And again, Google loves uh, if, if you have content like that. So uh, it's it, it's a uh, again the sky is the limit. So uh, if you're not using it now, you will open up a, a whole new world, uh, I guess. Eh? Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, where do you start? How do you do it? Uh, getting to understand it. Uh, for me, I started looking at this really back in January. Um, you could say that we were working with this when we're, we started with phrase and with um, Jasper. And, and by the way, um, 
Jasper uh, uses uh, ChatGPT. That's their back end, but <clears throat> it, it just helps people understand and get the prompts. Uh, they create the prompts much better than a lot of times you can. So uh, Jasper is still a great model to work with. Hopefully I can get them on. And also uh, Phrase, they come up with um, the, you know how we have Answer the Public? Uh, you were just talking about that. Yep. But they do that with blog articles and then they pull in the best blog article. You could get uh, get one of the, like whatever, um, uh, ChatGPT or whoever to reference it and to make it a better blog article. You know, or you could use Phrase and it'll summarize everything, give it to your writer and your writer can use that as research to build out a prompt for uh, the blog article. So um, I don't know about you, Wilfred. Our writers are still with us. Our writers have turned into more editors. So we still need to have, we don't want to have just the chat GPT article that goes out there. We have somebody go back, check it, re rewrite some of the um, uh, areas. And then we want to put it through um, a sort of a rephraser as well so at times. So I don't know if you're using a rephraser or you're just publishing it directly. No, we're very careful about just putting it on there. And that's also a funny thing. If you search for a particular, uh, I'm in a language model. Some people just copy that, even that text in their blog post. So if you want to outrank them, just that's also the low hanging fruit. Eh? Find uh, Google that particular topic and uh, with your keyword, and then you 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 know what people are just plain copy it from one to another. Always make it a little bit better, improve it, and use at least five images for a blog post of, of 2,500 words. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you can also create uh, amazing uh, video scripts, YouTube scripts. And if you go to a tool like InVideo, you can make faceless YouTube videos. Uh, they have, I think, 2 million different stock videos you can use. And every time you use, you, the AI says something, you can use a particular five second clip or something like that. So it, it's it's an amazing video about your product or your particular topic. And uh, you can use those again on all your social media outlets uh, in different formats and you're right. done as well. So uh, yeah, there's so much you can do now that you do not need to be an editor or a designer or whatever. And of course, if you take it up a notch, then yeah, you should go to a writer still, but you can create a lot more content because they don't have to go from scratch. They already have the framework where they can work on. So uh, yeah, we still have our writers as well because yeah. we also want to do a lot of SEO searches and that kind of stuff. Eh? Uh, if you go to Ahrefs, for example, uh, let's, for, for example, today I had a client that was about eczema. If you search for that particular topic, it's a 69 uh, keyword difficulty. That means out of 100, impossible to rank for. 160,000 variations on that keyword. So click on it, set your keyword difficulty below 10, and then look for everything that's below 10. You can rank that in six weeks if you uh, know what you're doing a little, of course make a high quality article, at least 2,500 words for a particular uh, topic in that particular niche. And uh, then you will start to rank. And that's that's amazing how that works. So, and that's also using AI, yeah, because every cornerstone article needs to have at least two supporting articles. So let's say my topic is about uh, how not to get eczema, for example. And then I need to write two other articles with an interlink to my cornerstone article. Plus, you need to have, I hope I'm not too technical, but you need to have two uh, outside backlinks. So go to Medium or create your WordPress website and link that to your supporting article. And then it goes to your cornerstone article. So Google works basically like a spider web. And your topic, your money-making product will be in the middle. And the more you create a web around that particular article, it goes from one to another and it hops all over to your keyword, the better it is. That's why we also do a lot of off-page SEO, as we call it. There we go to, as I said, Medium is a great example. You can create a free account, write an, uh, a few blog posts about your topic and a link to your website. That's an amazing way to do it. And how is that related to AI? 
well, normally if I need to create 10 articles, one article takes my rider or myself almost the whole day and my whole budget. But now with ChatGPT or Bart, you can create unlimited articles. And of course, that make them a little bit uh, enticing and, and easy to read. But it's so much easier to create 10 articles now than it was a year back. And now you can do the link building like you always wanted to do it. Uh, po post it on social media, a link back to your website. And uh, I'll never forget that uh, our good friend Howard Kaya told me the story about how he got a product ranked number one on Amazon without one sale and without one review. <laughs> how did he do it? He ranked it number one on Google. So that's how you see that all those big tech companies, they look at each other. That's still a technique we use. We have a high quality article. We promote it on Facebook. And if the click to rate goes to the roof, they don't want your money. They keep they get the money from your competitors. And we have seen clicks for half a cent straight to our website. And uh, again, you can choose from your website, send it straight to Amazon or sell on your own uh, uh, store, Shopify or WooCommerce. But either way, you will get the traffic. And I always say you need to be in control over your traffic. You want to build a community around your brand. And the only way to do it is attract them with quality content, not with a discount or a sale. They don't care what you're making. They care what it will do for them. And if I give 10 tips uh, how uh, not to get eczema, then people will click on it because if you have the itch, you want to get rid of it. And if I give the solution without even talking about my product, they will like what I'm doing. They will like my content, share it, and uh, they, will, they will come back because they will be your loyal follower. And again, how is it related to AI? I can do 10 different topics. I can go all the way down to see the low hanging fruit in that particular niche. And uh, the more specific you go, the better it is because uh, again, not much people will go that deep uh, on a particular topic. And uh, let me find an example right now to see what, uh, uh, if someone is out here, going for that particular keyword, because uh, again, if you do a lot of research, and that's always what I say, if people start working with a business, they almost start at the end, at the sale, but you wanna start at the beginning, and that's knowing what's useful, what's interesting in your niche, what's trending, what's relevant, what is your competition doing? Only if you know that, you can create a strategy. Out of that strategy, you will get objectives, targets, activities, then you will create your content, you will start to share, then you get trust, brand awareness and, and traffic, and then you will have the sale. And uh, if I look at Axima now, 426,000 searches, that's incredible. It's super hard to get uh, on page one for that particular topic. So uh, it's almost like a no-go on that particular one. So mm -hmm. that's why, yeah, on that particular thing, we're going to zoom in a little bit more. And uh, yeah, if we zoom in a little, then uh, you know exactly what you can post after. Let me go now here for the particular keyword. And I say the keyword difficulty cannot be more than 10. And normally I share my screens. So you see what I'm doing. But uh, what I'm doing now in Ahrefs is set my keyword difficulty to max, max 10. And uh, now you see, for example, what body was is good for eczema. That's keyword difficulty of five. So that's very easy to rank for. And again, if you create an article about that, then uh, you will get the, the Google juice. In total, there are 3.4 million searches for that particular keyword. And again, that's a lot of research you should do. You can do it for your niche as well. And I see here also, uh, for example, uh, again, uh, body wash for eczema. If you have a product like that, it's 10,000 searches with a difficulty of three. So that will take us uh, sometimes six weeks but we have seen rankings overnight almost because if keyword difficulty is below 10 yeah it's incredible and i see 4,000 keywords now that means i need to write at least let's say 200 articles and normally i will never get to do it but now with ai you can just smack out two articles almost a day yeah. and uh, yeah, that's how you how you use it okay let's spend a couple of minutes on AI tools, and then we'll go right into the questions. So 
Um, I've we've already talked about a couple plugins. We've talked about LLM, um, uh, other LLM uh, sites that you could use or apps. Uh, any tools that you're using that uh, people should be looking at? Well, if you want to do the uh, A Live voices, then use Jenny with an I, or go to Eleven Labs. Those two are, the, in my opinion, the most amazing ones. They also have a free trial, so you can test it out because they have actually emotion. So you can say it needs to be cheered or it needs to be sad or uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, there are also free online tools, for example, uh, video to text. That's uh, VEED.io. V -E -E you can use that one. I'm not sure if it's if it's real AI, but at least it gives you uh, a transcript from a video to text, and then you can use ChatGPT to either create your own video or make a breakdown of that particular video to use it in a blog post. Uh, we use a lot of uh, videos in InVideo, as I said, to create our own own videos. And again, you can ask ChatGPT to create a script. That's uh, that's the best way uh, to do it. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, out of that, yeah, Midjourney and ChatGPT and Bard itself, of course, are the ones uh, I use the most. Uh, for ads, I use AdsBots, as I said. Yeah, and keep an eye out on, on different ones that uh, keep popping up. But don't start on a shopping spree. Yeah? Most of them are garbage. They just see that it's a new gold rush. Mm -hmm. They throw something at yeah, you. Yeah, there is a lot of garbage out there. <laughs> a lot. So, so I would go for a trial first. And yep. if, uh, if the trial works, then uh, uh, yeah, stick to it. Huh? Okay. Uh, now, just a couple that have been on the podcast. So Pictory is one that we use and we like. Uh, it does pretty much anything video. So it could uh, take a script and create a video automatically for you. It could take um, photos and take your benefits and just make a slideshow. Um, it, it, it does a lot. It'll take this podcast. It'll summarize it. Uh, it'll take the best three points. Anyways, Pictories are, are a really cool one. The other one is eContent, e uh, which is uh, Max was just on. And Kelsey, maybe you can throw that up there. And that's for um, photos, uh, which is pretty, uh, pretty cool. These are for all of your Amazon photos. And they've just released... Um, a new version, which uh, does a lot of um, fonts. So if you're doing benefits or if you're doing uh, uh, photographs that need uh, fonts, they can do it, remove the background, add a background. It's really cool. Um, one of the main ones that I use uh, is AI PRM, uh, which just gives you a whole bunch of predefined prompts, uh, which is, is good. All you do is search. It's a it's free, but you can also pay for it as well. Uh, and you, it just get more, uh, more prompts. I'm just trying to think I added a couple just recently. The one that I was telling you about earlier on is, um, chat GPT, chat GPT. These are Chrome extensions, summarize everything. Uh, then, oh yeah, this is one I love. Uh, you've probably heard it a million times, Wilfred. People don't even think of it as, as AI, but Fireflies. Fireflies is one of my absolute favorites, and it's um, it takes notes. So during this uh, during this whole podcast, um, it takes notes, and then it summarizes the notes. It sends it over to me. We can then take it and just create all sorts of content. Um, but Fireflies is super cheap, very inexpensive. Oh, uh, there was one, or there, I mean, there's tons, but, oh, uh, Descript. Descript's another one that uh, we use quite a bit and uh, very similar to Fireflies. In fact, uh, we're just looking and comparing the two, but um, there's a million. We should put a, sh um, a sheet together and actually create a list. There's hundreds, if not thousands of AI tools now, but um, all right. Because because of the topic, I think we have a bunch of questions or comments. So you want to start with that, Kels? Okay. Uh, this one is from Neil. Uh, when writing a blog or news release article using AI, do you need to mention that it was written by AI? Uh, I would not do it, no. And that's why I always say 
proofread it yourself, make it a little bit yourself, uh, but never mention it's written by AI. It's uh, it's, it's your product. You, you need to you need to how do you say it? You need to approve it yourself. Eh? And if you like what you're doing, then uh, it's yours. Okay, and uh, this one's for you, Norm. Uh, can you tell us about the AI PRM extension for ChatGPT? Uh, a little like what it does and how you can use it. Yeah, sure. So all you need to do is uh, sign up. It'll become a Chrome extension. And whenever you use ChatGPT, you click on it and it'll open up. And what you'll see instead of that blank screen or the screen that has you know four questions, uh, it'll open up with all sorts of different prompts, all sorts of different prompts. And whatever you want to type in, uh, like it'll be a search bar uh, for free. I believe it's just public prompts that you can get. Uh, but then there's uh, specific prompts that the AI PRM community builds, which are usually a bit better. Uh, not necessarily, but just depending, you get much wider use of prompts. And then what it'll ask you to do is you, you pick whatever you want and it'll prompt you to add in the information. So it's a multi-prompt um, and you just add in, add in, add in. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. So I've been doing some work over at uh, uh, Digital Marketers and um, Mark Degrassi, who's uh, the president over there, I asked him to uh, help me out. I was doing uh, an event in Chicago and, and he said, uh, I was talking about avatars and I said, hey, can I uh, use your avatar sheet? You know, because he's got one that you just fill in, uh, him and Scott Cunningham. And uh, he said, I'll do one better for you. I've just written a prompt. And so you can find that over at uh, Mark uh, DeGrasse, uh, dot, uh, dot com, And he has a prompt there that creates your avatar on demand, which is super because it just asks you all the questions in your uh, from the sheet. You answer them. And then, like Wilfred was saying uh, at the beginning, it will create this incredible um, persona for you uh, very quickly. So it's incredible. Okay, so I hope uh, that'll help. But it's pretty. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, a uh, the AI PRM can have conflicts with some plugins. So you might have to um, just turn it off while you're working with ChatGPT4 and some plugins. Um, it'll come up and it'll tell you that there's an error message. But then afterwards, just turn it back on. Okay, uh, next one is from CoolHand99. Uh, when writing a blog, is it better to publish it on my Shopify or on a separate site as far as SEO is concerned? And does it make it a difference if it is AI generated? No, you can basically do uh, on your own website or your Shopify. Does it make a difference to the eyes of, of Google? As long as you have a good title, meta description, and all kinds of other things you need to have in the article. So it's, it's not the the space where you put it on it's just the content itself it needs to be google friendly you need to have your keywords in there without keyword stuffing so all the different things and i know shopify isn't that easy to do uh, seo uh, what i have for myself for example is a wordpress website that's not indexed on google i use the yoast plugin that's an amazing free plugin that will actually turn a, a, a ball into green if everything is seo friendly and then I just copy the whole thing and, and put it in my Shopify store. That's how we normally uh, sometimes do it. So, uh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't make any difference if it's AI or not, as long uh, as you don't put in the quotes like, uh, hey, I'm an AI model and this is my article or something like that. So again, proofread it and uh, yeah, make it, make it unique for yourself. Okay, and our last question uh, from Tony. Uh, how can we have an AI action plan? I'm being overwhelmed with so many different new AI tools every day. Well, that's also a good question. You should ask ChatGPT. It may sound silly, but uh, we also create uh, our strategy uh, documents out of ChatGPT. We just ask ChatGPT, this is my business. Uh, what should I start first? What social media platform should I start first? Uh, and again, that's coming back to my thing of finding what's useful, interesting, trending, and relevant in your particular industry. 
those things you can ask uh, uh, and research within those AI tools. And out of that particular summary, you will create a strategy, objectives, and targets. And uh, yeah, that's the step I will do. And I will definitely not go into every new AI platform. You need to have a language model. You need to have a model that can create images. Uh, uh, some other tools are nice to have. I just posted one on unrealperson.com. It will create persons that not exist. So you can use them for your reviews. If people have reviews without an image, for example, be careful there as well. Have eh? you put the, the wrong face to a wrong name? But uh, uh, yeah, there's so much you can do. But yeah, again, go back to the drawing board. Why did you start your business? It's always about the big why. And from the big why, find out what people are interested in and use AI as a, as a tool to the, to the, to their means. That's basically what I would advise. You could also, even for AI, but just for general tutorials, if you want to become an expert in something, you could create a prompt that just says that you're interested in this topic over an X months or a year. And what would the curriculum be or what would the learning lessons be for that extended period of time? And you'll be surprised that it will come up with a suggestion of what you have to learn, even where, like you, you could drill down. So let's say it's it's a very broad topic. So I'm learning SEO. Okay, where would I start? And the first week, and then it would drill down on the lessons and your your comprehension of it. And you could go in and set up your own curriculum to understand search engine optimization or on-page search optimization or writing a blog article and all these things that you can do. Um, it'll just generate a uh, like a weekly or a daily or an hourly thing that you have to do. If you've got an hour a day to spend or an hour a week to spend on understanding uh, online SEO, just tell it and it will write it. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also what I said with trending content eh, or your competitors, uh, we, we had a breakdown uh, uh, last week for, for a client of their competitors. And we just asked, this is the, our competitor. Can you give an overview of what they're doing, what they're doing best? And it will just scan the whole website and tell you, those are the th things where they're famous for, and those are the things that uh, the, the pros and cons, basically. And yeah, it will see, we'll, we'll get it in minutes. That's that's amazing. Yep. Okay, I think this is close to the giveaway. If you haven't registered for the giveaway, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people, and you'll be entered. Got to do it within the next few seconds because uh, after we come back from the sponsor, you will be at the Wheel of Kelsey. So, Kelsey, hit the button, and then we'll, we'll see you back at the wheel. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Rebate. Attention sellers and brand owners want to reach more shoppers and boost sales? Rebate's platform connects sellers with shoppers seeking great deals on new products. They make it easy to offer promotions, handle rebates, and ensure seamless redemptions. With countless reviews from satisfied customers, Rebate is the go-to solution to increase your sales. Visit Rebate.com today and start reaching more shoppers. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, and we're back. Okay, I think we can get right over to the wheel. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, Wilford, you excited? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone who entered today's Wheel of Kelsey. Just want to double check that everyone in here no late additions and i think we are good to go all right so let me shuffle these up and give this a spin and if you are the winner please email me k at lunchwithnorm.com and it looks like trip. Trip. all right that's a good one all right trip. so email me k at lunch with norm or k at lunchwithnorm.com and we'll set you up with uh wilfred's uh prize all right that's it for today wilford thanks for coming back uh, want more great information 
don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.